mourning the victims and searching for answers in Christchurch. Outside the city's Al Nur Mosque, people paused to honor those who lost their lives in the worst mass murder in New Zealand's modern history. These were the scenes Friday as a suspected white supremacist opened fire on worshippers at Al Nur and at a mosque in the neighborhood of Linwood, killing and wounding dozens. As police scrambled to stop the shooter, rescuers raced to save the wounded. Survivors spoke of a narrow escape. After three, four minutes, uh, we heard, you know, the firing, and it was from the main entrance, the main entrance of the building, and then everybody just ran toward the back doors just to save themselves. And uh, first we hide behind the cars and, you know, under the cars, and then when we see that firing is still on, we try to, you know, jump the fence. This footage shows the moment police apprehended the suspect. After forcing his car off the road, they brought an end to the rampage. The suspected shooter is 28-year-old Australian Brenton Tarrant. Charged with murder, he appeared for the first time in court on Saturday and was remanded to custody until April 5th. Investigators say he published a racist, anti-immigrant manifesto online before carrying out the massacre. The Prime Minister vowed to tighten the country's gun laws after it was revealed Tarrant had a license to carry the types of guns used in the attack. While work is being done as to the chain of events that led to both the holding of this gun license and the possession of these weapons, I can tell you one thing right now. Our gun laws will change. New Zealand's terror alert level was raised from low to high in the wake of the attack, with added security around the country's mosques. Dozens of the wounded remain hospitalized, some of whom are still fighting for their lives. OK, for more on this, let's cross over to Claire Richardson, who is in Christchurch. Claire, the suspected gunman um, has already appeared in court. He's been charged with murder. What do we know about him and what is likely to happen to him now? That's right. He appeared in court today very quickly indeed, but apparently that is typical in a New Zealand proceeding like this. Uh, he's going to be held until April 5th when he will be on trial again, currently facing one count of murder, although the judge has said that you can suspect to see many more tacked on to that later. Uh, the key thing to know about this individual is, in fact, that he is believed to be the man who posted a rambling manifesto online in which he expressed his dislike of multiculturalism and immigration in New Zealand, two things that the, cult, that the country really values, uh, in addition to expressing his support for white nationalist leaders. So you can imagine that is very troubling indeed uh, to the people who are grieving here today. Claire, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has promised very clearly that New Zealand's gun, tr gun laws will change. Is this controversial in, way in any way? Will this be uh, supported by New Zealanders? Well, there are many saying she will need to act quickly to impose any reforms um, while emotions are still running high at this moment. She did say earlier today that there would be some gun control imposed. We later heard the attorney general take it a step further, saying that he would ban semi-automatic weapons. Later walked that back a little bit to say he didn't want to get too far ahead of the prime minister's wishes. Uh, but around here today in Christchurch, there's a very clear appetite uh, for something to have been done. There are a lot of questions being asked about how a man like the key suspect uh, could legally have possessed five firearms, including two semi-automatic weapons, given the country's current laws. OK, so a lot of questions being asked. Describe the atmosphere for us uh, where you are. How are people in Christchurch in New Zealand coping? 
Well, you can imagine that this is a very dark day. Um, after many people were in lockdown throughout the day yesterday, either in hospitals or in classrooms, this was the first time that people were able to come out and grieve together. And earlier today, it was a beautiful sunny day out, a typical day when you might imagine people would be having weekend picnics. Uh, instead, events were canceled and makeshift memorials like the one I'm standing in front of right now have sprung up around the city where people have been laying down flowers and teddy bears and messages of solidarity um, to their Muslim communities, saying that this should not have happened to you in a country like New Zealand, where there's freedom of religion, uh, and we are so sorry and are going to work together to try and prevent something like this from happening again. All right. Claire Richardson in Christchurch, thank you so much for your reporting.